I understand you guys are really pushing the emphasis on psychosis in this game. Is psychosis fun? Where's the overlap between fun for players and that theme? Well, I mean, I, I don't think we ever set out to make a game that's, um, you know, happy, happy, fun, fun. There was a notion that games had to be fun. And I think in the same way that in cinema, game, uh, films had to be slapstick, right? And I think you can make a game engaging. There are plenty of games out there that are very engaging, but you wouldn't describe them necessarily as fun. You know, if you watch something like The Revenant, you wouldn't, it's not a fun movie, it's, but it's a deeply engaging movie. And I think you could say the same thing for uh, Hellblade. So you think there's a lot of room to grow in the industry for games that aren't seen as just fun? Yeah, I think they have to be interesting. They have to surprise you. They have to defy your expectations. They have to offer something new. And they have to be responsive and they have to, you know, technically they, they have to work and be responsive and fluid and smooth and visually compelling. And you should come out of it feeling like you've had an experience that's worthwhile, that you remember, that means something. It's not throwaway entertainment. It's, it's something more, deeper. I think we should all, well, we don't all have to strive for it, but I think it's worth taking some chances. I think the counter argument would be, they're called games. <laughs> like, should they not be games? I've thought about this because like, if you think of all the kinds of games you've got, you know, Tetris, which is purely mechanical puzzle, it's more like a Rubik's Cube. Or sports games or racing games, they're more like watching or playing sports in real life. And then there's, you know, paintballing. Like, the things that you can do in reality, there is an equivalent in what we call games. But I think what games are is alternate realities. We're making virtual, not, I don't mean VR, but we're making virtual worlds with their own rules that are deeply interactive and compelling. So just saying games, games have become so big, like so diverse, so, so interesting in so many ways that to just say one word that represents them is, doesn't fit anymore. And to say games should be this doesn't work. It's, it's too broad. It's like saying reality should be NBA. Well. Yeah, well, if you're an N massively into NBA, yeah, sure, your reality is NBA, but not mine, you know? <laughs> so you'd prefer to call them experiences over games? I don't mind the word games. I think it's fine. I just don't think games should be this is, yeah. is something I believe in. It's a bold take. If I don't know if you said this exactly, but are you saying that Hellblade should not be seen as fun? It's definitely not fun, like in that sense. I mean, I hope that you would come out of it saying, wow, that was a great worthwhile experience. But I, I, we're tackling issues of, of fear, psychosis, death, and some of it can be terrifying and some of it can be horrible and some of it can be dark, and, but it's not all dark. It goes on, it is a journey that goes, there are, pe there are ups and downs, but if you come out of it going, wow, that was a fun game, rad, it'd be a weird thing, I think, to say. You don't want to hang out with that person that gets too into it? <laughs> Yeah, I think it'd be, inc I mean, if I think of some of my favorite games, like, I mean, Last of Us was a great game, but I, I, it's not happy fun, you know? <laughs> right, right, right. And there's no such thing as dark fun. Oh, I think you can take, take pleasure in darkness as well, but uh, Are you that type that's of another story. 